G'day everyone, I wanted to give a fair, my fair, an honest review of Diablo 4 before I stopped playing it. Uh, I started playing in the three days early access. Um, I spent $140 on the game, which is the most that I've spent on a game in at least a decade. Uh, insanely expensive uh, game for what you get. Uh, now I just wanted to run through a few things as I give my review of the game. Um, being the fourth installment into a series, I would expect it to be better than a, uh, a fresh install. Uh, however, it is not. Uh, it is basically paying a hundred plus dollars to alpha test a game. Um, I know I said that about Torchlight Infinite Season 3. Um, however, I would rate Torchlight Season 3 uh, far above Diablo 4. Uh, for a number of reasons, um, and maybe I'll touch on a few as we go through this. Now, Diablo 3 versus Diablo 4. Uh, Diablo 3 has been out for a very long time. They've learnt a lot of lessons and a lot of things... Um, should have been carried over to Diablo 4, for example. When you get an achievement in Diablo 4, it pops up in chat and lets everyone know that you've got an achievement. In Diablo 3, you click on the achievement and it comes up and says, uh, by 3 they come. Oh, you pre-ordered a copy of Diablo 4. Cool. In Diablo 4, when someone gets an achievement, it tells you in chat. And then you have to go and look it up yourself. Now this is an extremely basic uh, thing that they could have just ported the code across from Diablo 3 and it would have been fine for everyone involved. However, uh, they didn't carry across any lessons learnt in Diablo 3. And, uh, yeah, you just get to punch yourself in the head if you want any quality of life from Diablo 3 to come across to Diablo 4. Um, another major thing, Diablo 3, again, when you try a new spec, you can go into town and test out the spec. However, in Diablo 4, it's less ARPG and more MMO light. Um, so you can't do anything in town. Another game that does this poorly is Path of Exile. Um, Torchlight, Infinite, you can. It's great. You can dash around town. Uh, here, if you want to go fast, you can jump on your horse. However, your horse can't sprint because that's a skill and you can't use skills in town. So you can just get on your horse and get off. Um, I'll quickly touch on mounts because that's another... Uh, horse's ass, basically. Now, this is where you come uh, when you first start the game. Uh, you talk to a very uninspiring priest um, who basically tells you that the entire campaign is going to be a complete waste of time, uh, which it is. So you come into town. The first vendor that you find is the stable. You think, oh, sweet, there's horses in this game. Uh, I'll be able to ride around because the map is kind of huge. There's heaps of waypoints, but it's huge. I'll be able to ride around, but no. No, 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 no. You get to run around Kyovashad. You get to run around Seragar. You get to run around Dry Steps. Um, and then do you go to Hauzar or uh, Kyovashad? whatever. Act 4, you get a mount. Why? No reason. Just cause. I mean, there's a stable right here. And if you've pre-ordered the game, you've got mounts. You can come here and interact with this guy. And you have mounts here. You just can't pull them out. Be because. Um, it's just... Ugh. Whoever designed it just needs to be slapped in the face. Um, 
let's go with that, whatever. And yes, yeah, so it's just it's just a terrible, terrible design. Um, you get them out later because uh, they make the areas bigger. I mean, it's still big because you're running everywhere. Um, anyway, I'm going to get sidetracked on just another example of a disgustingly shit design. Um, the campaign. If you've played this, you know that um, you get drugged by some villagers and you have a little less blood in you so you can find petals on the ground and watch a little cutscene. That is Act 1 all the way through to Act 4. You chase after Lilith. She's already been there. She's already done whatever she wants to do. And you get to watch a little pedal cutscene. That's the entire story up to Act 5, where Bill Blizzard's involvement actually starts. So Act 1 to 4 and everything else involved, I believe, has been outsourced to another company. Uh, not Blizzard, because it doesn't feel like a Blizzard game. It feels like a cheap, rushed pile of crap. And funnily enough, in the character uh, profile, you can change your uh, title. Now, running around, almost everyone you see has the title of Hasty Trash or something else trash. Um, just everyone has trash in their name. Uh, it seems dirty trash, um, eventful trash, hollowed trash, lethal trash, uh, rampaging trash. The game just like legendary trash. There you go, a guy just runs away. Um, it's just, it's reflective of the game. It's a very hard game to enjoy. Uh, in Torchlight, you go through the story, you get to end game, you go and do maps just because that's the progression. Then you do bossing. Um, it's fun. You're always getting stronger. Um, you're farming stuff to sell on the trade house. Um, it's a fun progression. In Diablo 4, you start doing the story... And everything around you levels up with you. So, Kyavashad being the starting area, it's not level 1 to 20. It's level 1 to 100. Because the monsters level up with you. You go to the next area, the monster is the same level as you. You go to the next area, they're the same level. The only time this changes is if you started and you went, straight to um, the Act 4 area. They're level 35. However, when you get to level 40, they're level 40. So there is slightly, but you wouldn't just go straight to Act 4 area when you start the game. So everything levels up with you. Um, if you go to different world tiers, um, they are gated. But you can't do that until you finish the story anyway. So you need to have completed the campaign and done the capstone dungeon. Which is probably the most interesting dungeons. There's two of them in the entire game. The rest of the dungeons are just afterthoughts. Maybe Blizzard made the capstones, two dungeons, and outsourced the rest. So, World Tier 1, you just blitz through and kill everything. World Tier 2 is much harder, so unless your build is really strong, 20% um, increased XP, you're going to be killing 2 to 3 times faster on World Tier 1, so it is literally pointless to do World Tier 2. Uh, World Tier 3, you start getting sacred and unique items, so that's really good. Uh, so 50 plus, you would do World Tier 3 after you've completed the campaign, and the capstone dungeon and then world tier 4 which is torment um, is level 70 plus ancestrals can now drop and new new uniques can drop 200% um, xp gold who gives a shit uh, monsters drop like a thousand gold you pick up a piece of equipment it sells for 70,000 
Monsters drop gold. No one cares. Monsters overcome resistance. Whatever. Um, <laughs> more gold. It's just absolute garbage. It's just a throwaway line of, ooh, it does something. That's just whatever. Um, that's world tiers. World tier two just shouldn't exist. Um, what do we got? I've done act five versus the rest. Uh, act five cutscenes are insane. They are really cool. Um, the monster density, the elites in act four, all of that is really, really cool. Reminds me of Diablo three. Um, has really fun gameplay. Uh, there's stuff happening all around the place. You're just blitzing through, killing lots of enemies. Um, everything looks really cool. The angels are absolutely arrogant. Uh, the church is full of themselves. Um, you're scum. They're the best. Blah, blah, blah. It's really fun. A really good Diablo feeling. Act 1 to 4 is you're running around clicking on a statue. And uh, it's just... Oh. It's tough getting through the campaign because it's not fun. Um, the graphics graphics are really good. Um, looking at this versus Diablo 3, um, the ground is... I mean, it looks it looks okay. The stash uh, looks kind of cool. Uh, Diablo 4. It's hard to click on Diablo 4 because even the icon on the taskbar, it's just a little notepad. It's not even a, a D with a four on it. How hard is that? Um, <laughs> it's just... Uh, so many things just scream, uh, we rush this because we want to cash in. Um, and season zero lasts for six weeks and then they're going to make season one. Uh, so we've got the stash over here. Everything, everything just uses one slot. Eh, whatever. Wardrobe. It's not like the Diablo uh, 3 wardrobe. So Diablo 3, you've got your stash here. Gems are 1. Equipment's 2. In Diablo 4, it's just everything's 2. Um, armory, you can quick switch between specs, which is really cool. Diablo 4, if you want to quick switch between specs, you go to... Oh, what's the button? A. A for uh, abilities and character. Um, so you've got Paragon Board, which is, yeah, whatever. Skill Tree. If you want a quick switch between specs, all you have to do is refund everything. Why, why go from Diablo 3 where you can quick switch between specs to, okay, I've either memorized everything in this spec, I want to try something else, or I look on um, online and find a build guide and go through and click everything. Click, 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 click. It's just, why? You had it in Diablo 3. Just port it across to Diablo 4. Oh, this person earned a challenge. Nightmare ally. Oh, what's that do? I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll just click on it. Oh, you can't because... You could in Diablo 3, you just can't in Diablo 4 because they couldn't be bothered porting that code across. Possibly because Blizzard didn't fucking make it. Anyway, um, I feel like Blizzard didn't make 1 to 4 or any of the stuff uh, included. Alright, we've covered world tiers. Altars of Lilith. This is a bugbear of mine. They are just scattered around the world. There's no rhyme or reason where they are. Um, but if you want to be as powerful as possible, you have to get them. It takes about three or four hours of just running around collecting the um, altars. Now you can either explore every single area in the game. Uh, some of these are just slapped against some trees uninspiring very boring um, or you just go to icy veins bring it up and it shows you where they all are you complete that area it shows what um, rewards they give 
and then you just click on the next one load that up and you just have that on one screen and you're just running around collecting things it is absolutely uninspiring not fun and just an absolute garbage design if you have to do this every season holy shit i'm not doing it um the campaign is extremely bad in path of exile you have to do the campaign every time but when you get to end game it's actually interesting diablo 4 you watch the streamers they get to 100 and they go uh, oh what do i do now Diablo 3, you could go to Paragon 3000. And that'd be your progression. You'd be getting stronger. Diablo 4, you get to 100. You've got all your gear and you go, huh, what do I do now? I'll just go play something else. Um, it's just not fun. Um, who would have thought that Greater Rifts would be a better design than uh, Diablo 4? Now, in Diablo 4, if you want to level up fast, you go to Champion's Demise because it's the only dungeon that hasn't been nerfed. Uh, the packs of elites and stuff in there are far better than any other dungeon in the whole game. And it's got three areas you run in. You clear a wing, you leave. You clear a wing, you leave. You clear a wing. Super fun, you know. Air quotes. Boring as shit. Um... And then you've got the classes. So, <clears throat> Barbarian, Whirlwind, you just spin to win. That's the whole class. Yay. Um, it was strong in the beta. Extremely strong in release. Uh, it's been nerfed a lot. Druid, really strong. Has three or four specs that are just insane. Uh, Necro has uh, a build bone spirit that hits like a truck has a lot of uh setup um is pretty strong uh not really great for solo um then you have oh, rogues rogues are just insane um a bit more skill required to play i believe uh but they hit for millions uh they've got insane single target insane clear um and are really good then you've got sorks um now, my level 20 druid was hitting for 1,000, 2,000, uh, and my level 56, um, what am I, 50, yeah, 56 sorcerer hits for 2,000 as well. Feels bad. Uh, a level 56 druid is hitting for, you know, 100,000, um, and a sorcerer is hitting for 3,000. Um, feels bad, man. Sork is absolute garbage, was really strong in the beta. And they nerfed the absolute shit out of it. Um, a lot of people went Sork. And it's just been nerfed into the ground. So it's not fun. Um, combat. Combat's pretty fun. Um, for the most part. For other classes. Um, I'll quickly get to a dungeon. Show you a little bit of my Sorcerer. Um, I'm not really a fan of this build at all. Um, this... this this dungeon is pretty close to that. Let's teleport there. Um, I probably don't even need to go to a dungeon, honestly. Um, although I'm in town, so I can't really just show you abilities or anything. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? So, Sork, you can left click for, you know, a thousand. Yay. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, or you can pop an ability and melt things. Yay. Look at that thousand hit. Woohoo. Two thousand. I'm huge. Um, and then every, um, every minute or so, 65 seconds, you can pop your ult and spam abilities and melt, uh, elites and bosses. Um. That's just not fun. I hate the Sork. I'm not playing Sork next season. Um, anyway, I'm 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 falling down a hill. Um, I'll take a little break and I'll come back when I'm not so salty. 
All right, so a cool, an actually cool mechanic that they have is Nightmare Dungeons. Um, you've got all the dungeons around the place, which are fine. Um, you get uh, glyphs with your paragons. These are your um, gems from Diablo 3. They socket into these spots, which they give bonuses to the radius around. Um, the radius increases when you level it up to 15, exactly like the uh, the gems in Diablo 3. When you get them to 25, they do something new. Um, you pop them in, you get the bonus. You go to another one, you pop it in, you get a bonus. Uh, you pop it in there. Now you complete a um, nightmare dungeon and you get to level up your glyph. Cool. Um, these drop in the world. Then when you do a dungeon, you'll do a tier one. Um, it'll drop maybe a tier one or a tier two. Um, if you get the wrong ones, you can just go and craft some uh, sigils. I believe it's over here. So if you're getting unlucky, you're not upgrading at all. Uh, you get the drops, then you can just go and craft a sigil up to tier 20, and ancestral up to tier 100. Um, these basically set the level of the. I um, set the level of the dungeon, uh, which is cool. Um, a tier nine is something like uh, monster level 62. Uh, well, maybe that's a 13. Anyway, whatever. They just range from tier 1 being around about 50 all the way up to um, over 100, I'm guessing. And they just make a dungeon a little bit harder. They give... Um, so, this one, for example, you deal 10% more damage to elites. Elites always have suppressor affix. What's suppressor affix? I don't know. I can't click on it. Why? Just be able to click on it and look at what bucket does. Um, <laughs> or shift. Shift do it? No, no, no. Okay, cool. What suppressor? Eh, no idea. Uh, monster burning damage. Monsters deal additional 22% of their physical damage as burning damage over 5 seconds. That's a pr relatively uh, fine one. There's other ones where um, monsters can constantly fear you and... Monsters don't have diminishing returns. So if you get that one, just throw it on the ground and never do it. Or salvage it. Um, and create a different one. Monster CC sucks. Uh, sometimes you get four elites with fear. And if you're not a druid or barbarian with unstoppable, um, you just get feared. And 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 dead. And feared, and feared, and feared, and feared, and feared, and feared, and feared. Um, it's a really shit design. Um, but nightmare dungeons are more interesting than standard dungeons. Um, purely because you can upgrade the glyphs, and the loot seems to be worse, but the XP seems to be better. Um, elixirs, you can use these for minor buffs and 5% XP. You can't put them on your bar anywhere. So every time you want to use one, you have to open your inventory, go to consumables, right click on Elixir, and it pops up there. Why not just have an Elixir slot? Why? Um, gear can be upgraded five times for Sacred and Ancestral. Um, Makes them better. Stuff rolls. Um, elemental res in Diablo 3. Uh, am I still logged in? Yep. So you've just got all res on gear. Resistance to all elements. Okay, you still did have fire, lightning, stuff. But gems give you most of your all res. Um, whereas in Diablo 4... Gems give six percent. Yay! Um, <laughs> it's it's a lower value, but a higher percentage. Um, but then your 
Um, where are we? Fire res. So 38% fire res, you would think, reduces your uh, damage against fire by 38%, but no, it reduces it by 19%. Why not 38%? Armor. Um, armor contributes to your damage reduction against all elements. Um, reduced damage from close is against all elements. Reduced damage from distance is against all elements. Um, whereas you have uh, a diamond for resist all elements. That, I believe, does not include uh, poison and shadow um, so it's just yeah anyway I'm not going to go into that I don't really I haven't really looked into end game itemization and stuff uh, a lot of the builds require a unique to drop um, uniques only drop after the campaign. So if you're looking up a druid build that uses two uniques, uh, forget it. Look up something that um, doesn't use two uniques because they don't drop um, before the end of the campaign. Um, that's my review on Diablo 4. My, I'll give it a, a, a solid 2 out of 10. Um, I've not enjoyed the time that I've played this game. Oh, how long have I been playing? I don't know. No idea. Um, <clears throat> so I probably won't play this again until Season 1. And if Season one's no better than this, I'll just uninstall it. Um, I was playing a druid getting carried through Nightmare Dungeons because druids kind of dog shit early. Um, again, I was following a build that said, you need a, a couple of uniques. And the, the uniques don't drop before 50. Um, I managed to get a couple of the... Um, uh, one of the uniques that you need for this build. Um, I can't use it until 45. Um, it's really nice. I just can't use it yet. Um, but yeah, so you can get boosted... You need to be on world tier 3, so the monster levels are um, set to that um, area. Uh, Nightmare Dungeons set the monster level uh, as well. But yeah, that's how you get boosted in Diablo 4. It's nothing like Diablo 3, where you just max level straight away after 5 minutes takes a fair bit more effort uh depends on how strong your friends are uh another garbage i think i mentioned it in the last time i did a a trial of this you have hell tides they happen every two hours uh, a lot of the materials that you need end game come from hell tides so every two hours you have to farm a hell tide um which is interesting but the two hour cooldown can eat a bag of dicks uh, the world bosses are completely uninspiring. Before level 50, they're hard. After 50, they're an absolute fucking joke. Um, you don't need many of their materials, though, so it's fine. Um, bounties are pretty garbage. You can get okay items from them, but... Again, they're time-gated as well. Hell tides are time-gated. World bosses are time-gated. Um... And most of it's just uninspiring garbage. Um, so yeah, I give this game a 2 out of 10. I'm probably going to uninstall it now to save up some, uh, free up some space on my computer. And I'll be going back to Torchlight Infinite. Anyway, if you watched, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you in Torchlight. Cheers.